Welcome to episode 360 of We Don't Die Radio. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the book, We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death, and also host of a new podcast on iHeartRadio called Shades of the Afterlife. This episode, I want to include the latest, the greatest, a bit of the year in review, some words of wisdom about doing our unfinished business when we get to the afterlife, all from Transmedium Scott Milligan. Also, some words about walking our own soul's path while we're here on Earth and the six stages we go through for spiritual growth. I think you'll find these words very interesting, and you'll probably discover that where you are today is in one of those stages. And that will be shared from Philip Dykes and Carrie McLeod, who are our two friends, tutors, mediums, and just great people. And then at the end, I want to share with you a very heartwarming reunion that was made just yesterday through our Sunday gathering. So this is being recorded August 2nd, 2021. And it's been quite a year, well, a year and a few months since COVID hit. I feel like I need to clean up with you guys a little bit and apologize for not being so active on We Don't Die Radio. It has been quite a year. Back in March 2020, my mom and I couldn't work our catering business. And as you may or may not know, that has been my livelihood for over 33 years doing We Don't Die Radio was, I don't want to say a hobby, it's much more than that. It was a passion, but it did not supply any income. So through the past year and several months, I've had to recreate myself. It's been difficult emotionally. It's been difficult financially. And we take it one day at a time. I have relocated to live with my mom. I still have my house with my auntie but this is where I've needed to be. And mom and I are really good together. We're very close friends. And through thick and thin, people need people. And I've got my mom. And I'm so happy about that. But on that journey, there's been, like I said, there's been some down times, there's been some good times. And I'm really grateful to share those six stages that we go through for spiritual growth. Because I can see within myself, it hasn't been always rosy. And to know that the stages I've gone through and continue to go through are all for the evolution of my soul really is significant. So you want to make sure you listen to that. I've done everything I can to stay upbeat, to stay positive. Personally, I have a little garden with tomatoes and herbs and flowers and vegetables. It's been very nice. And then on the opposite side of the house, I've created a bird sanctuary that I've been nurturing birds from woodpeckers to chickadees to beautiful little hummingbirds. And so I feel that's really been nurturing my soul to do that. And again, lots of time with my mom, who I really enjoy being with. One of the other things that we've done is, now I say we, this is along with Scott Milligan, his partner, Darren Wynn, Carrie McLeod, and Philip Dykes, is all of us went from working and traveling and being able to provide for our families to not having any of that. So we've created online programs, online courses, we've done online medium demonstrations, and we do what's called a free Sunday gathering, which is our non-denominational kind of service. We hold it on Zoom. And it's great. We have music videos we play, there's always a different topic that we speak about. And at the end of each one, we do medium demonstrations and reunite loved ones with their people in the afterlife so that each one of us know on a weekly basis that our loved ones are around. And I figured out through our demonstrations that we do and through our Sunday gathering, we've reconnected at least 500 people this past year who have been in grief and got words from a loved one. It's pretty darn special. And even those of us who don't get a reading, we know that our loved ones are around because of how specific these messages are. And speaking of medium readings, just a couple days ago, we did a demonstration with the great mediums and tutors from the Arthur Finley College, Paul Jacobs and Sue Wood. He is a teacher, like I said, and an evidential medium. 
And so on this demonstration on Zoom, he verbally gave evidence of people in the afterlife and gave messages. But we also had another video screen open and you could see Sue's hand as she was drawing their portraits. Really great and gives me goosebumps right this second to even remember it. We had, I think, eight people that had come through during our time together. And she's also a medium, but she can see the people. She can see them in their mind's eye just as they want to show themselves. Now, Somebody could have passed when they were in their 90s and very sickly, but their favorite days could have been when they're in their 40s or 50s and they were looking healthy and vibrant. And such is the case as one of the ladies that came through. She sent me a picture of her grandmother and to compare it with the picture that Sue drew, it's the same woman. Absolutely magnificent. So I've had an opportunity to be close to the spirit world, close to inspiration every week since COVID hit and turned my life upside down, so to speak. So my apologies for not staying really on top of giving you good quality radio shows through We Don't Die Radio. The good news is I got a call from the producer of Coast to Coast AM, which is, I believe, the 10th largest radio show in the world with something like 6 million nightly listeners. He had the idea to have a podcast through iHeartRadio that's on just the afterlife. And out of all the people that are out there sharing about the afterlife, he's listened to my show. I've been a guest on Coast to Coast AM. And he picked me or they picked me to be the host of this new show. As the many weeks have progressed, I have been loyal to upload one episode every week of this new show. And how is it different than We Don't Die Radio, you ask? Maybe you ask is that show, I would say, is the best of the best. This show, we can talk for an hour with one person. That show, we could have two or three different guests all within the hour. So we get further details, I would say, on We Don't Die Radio. But if you're just looking for one-stop shopping to just hear what's the newest, what's the latest, what's the greatest on the afterlife, all the reasons to believe, several topics within one episode that's on Shades of the Afterlife. I'm really proud of it. And like I said, our folks on Coast to Coast AM share about it often to millions of people. So I look for new opportunities to reach people because if you're listening right now, there's a good chance you came to this show for one of a couple of reasons. One is you have a loved one who is no longer walking this earth and you want evidence that they live on, that they're okay. Another reason people listen is they have been diagnosed with an illness or they have a loved one who has, and we need some comfort that we actually do go on. And I'm so proud to say I've got so many different reasons that you can comfortably believe and know and have faith and trust And live your life as if we go on. When we close our eyes for that last time here on earth, we will open them to our loved ones, even our pets are there. And the third reason people really come to this show and looking for evidence of the afterlife is they develop a fear of dying. Where it comes from, who knows? Is it part of our spiritual journey? Probably. But that's how I started. A fear of dying led me on what's now a 25-year journey for looking for evidence of the afterlife. And although I found it many, many years ago, I was too afraid, I was going to call myself a chicken, (laughs) too afraid to tell people about it for fear of what people would think. I used to think people were crazy that talked about the afterlife. And I didn't want to be labeled by friends and family as one of those crazy people. Now, yes, I do have some family members and friends that think I'm a little bit crazy. But you know what? So what? I walk my walk, I talk my talk. And there are people that are listening. And I know there are because you're here today. 
So that's pretty much the difference between the two shows. And if you want to listen to Shades of the Afterlife, you can easily go to wedontdie.com. And at the top of the page there, you can click the tab that says radio shows, and it'll take you right over. And of course, you can scroll down and listen to the past 360 episodes of this show. There really is no reason to not believe in the afterlife, but it takes something. It takes work on our part. In the beginning, I was so anti-believing in the afterlife. I thought nobody could possibly have the information. I thought these people that had near-death experiences, they saw the white light. That was a normal part of the brain shutting down. I was very arrogant, I would say. I really thought I knew better. The truth is, I didn't go through the work to discover the evidence of the afterlife. So if you're new to this show, Yes, take a walk down my memory lane, listen to some past episodes, and you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we go on. Even come to one of our live events or one of our online classes, because not only do you get to hear from other people great evidence of the afterlife, but you can actually tap into your own psychic nature and do psychic readings on other people and learn how to do medium readings on other people. It's fascinating and it is great. And I am proud to say that perhaps going through this transformation from me giving up my regular job that paid the bills to recreating myself, it has not only nurtured my soul and kept me going, but I'm thankful for the people that have donated to make it possible for me to do this full time. So I'm really grateful. Thank you for that. And speaking of our psychic abilities, just two days ago, my mom and I were flicking through the channels and we saw the movie Harriet. And it's about Harriet Tubman, who you may know, she was very well known for her rescues of black slaves in the eastern United States, bringing them north across the border, and many up into Canada during the time of slavery. She herself had escaped slavery and made 13 trips from the south to the north and personally rescued about 70 enslaved people her family, her friends, and she was part of the anti-slavery movement and what's called the Underground Railroad. Harriet was an amazing woman. She was courageous and never gave up. She was even the first woman to lead an armed expedition in the Civil War. She was part of a raid that liberated more than 700 enslaved people. So why am I talking about this on an afterlife show? Well, Because during the movie, she had all these messages from God, she would say. I had to look this up to be sure. But yes, Harriet Tubman was a woman that would use her psychic ability. She could foresee the future. She would get messages which way to travel so she wouldn't get captured. Traveling with these people to bring them into safety and and into freedom. There's much written on her about her using this nature, and it's nature that we all have as human beings, as a God-given right of being human. We do have intuition. We do have psychic abilities. And you know it. You've met people that you get a feeling for. You've had times where you know the phone would ring, and you know who would be calling you. One can guess that you've been with people and you've said the very same thing at the very same time. During the past 16 months, we've been holding a weekly course on psychic abilities, also one on mediumship, but the psychic one has been wonderful. It's been Wednesdays and every month new students are invited to come in. So you're welcome to join. And it's been wonderful to learn and discover how we can use this psychic ability. And it all comes in through our feelings. Our friend Scott Milligan often says, where is the soul? He asks, where do you feel joy? If you were to hold a puppy or a kitten or a newborn baby, or think of your most favorite memory, well, where is that feeling? And chances are it's in your chest or in your belly or somewhere in that range. If you concentrate on that area and you have the intention to maybe know something about a situation or if something's right or wrong for yourself, if you direct your attention to that center 
to that place where you felt the joy, that's the beginning of training you how to use your psychic potential. And so in our Wednesdays classes, you get to develop that. You get to learn how to recharge your soul by sitting in the power. And then you actually get to practice with people in the class. You're put into breakout rooms and you hold the intention of whatever the assignment is that Phil and Carrie offer in that class. And then when you work in these breakout rooms and you pay attention to that feeling in your belly, you start knowing things about the person. The way our soul works very often is pictures can come through, feelings can come through, you might hear a word, you might hear a song, you might have an emotion. They're all tied in with that power of the soul. So it's really been great that we've had so many students that have been able to start their journey, whether it's into psychic or mediumship, because a lot of people think mediumship is something they can't do or isn't real. But let me tell you, the same thing happens when we are in our mediumship class on Thursdays. And again, we welcome new students every month. And if you're listening to this and you want to join in, we do ask that you take the psychic class first so you know how to work that psychic muscle. But in the mediumship class, you use that same psychic nature But this time when you're in a breakout room and you're working with another person, you hold that intention, you hold that love in your heart to have a loved one who's no longer walking this earth come through and not only give a message, but give details that the recipient knows is their loved one. There's a lot of mediums out there that give beautiful messages, but where's the real evidence that they're talking to our loved one? And it's interesting because our loved ones come to us often through our imagination. And we humans often say, oh, that was just my imagination. It can't be true. But have you ever had a feeling like you could smell your grandmother's apple pie or a fragrance or your grandfather's pipe or cigar, or even once I got a taste of an apple strudel in my mouth. And of course, the woman I was talking to, her grandmother was famous for her apple strudel. So that was fun. But we have thoughts of our loved one, we have memories of being with them. And like I said, so often we just chalk it up to oh, that was just my imagination, but it's not it's how our loved ones come through. So in our Thursday mediumship classes, when we go into those breakout rooms, We are really asked to leave our fears and our worries, leave them at the door, so to speak. When we're afraid, when we're thinking this will never work, our conscious mind takes over and that divine guidance from the unseen world isn't there. When we do trust and we do tap into that belly and ask about information from someone's loved one, Very often, we start feeling things that aren't part of us. You know, I had a time that I actually felt like I had a tumor in my belly. I can't really explain what that felt like. But when I said to the woman, I said, I have a feeling, I have your mom with me, and that she passed and she had a cancerous tumor in her belly. And the woman said, yes, that's true. As I continued to trust, I knew things about this woman. I knew things about their relationship. I would get images in my mind of things like my grandmother. My grandmother, when she passed, or I should say after she passed, we found hundreds and hundreds of magazines. And she had gone through them and dog-eared the corner of many pages of things she wanted to get back to. And I got the image of my grandmother in my head. And when I said to this woman, your mother, when she passed, she had hundreds and hundreds of magazines. They were all dog-eared. The corners of them were all folded down. She said, yes. So there was other things that happened. So it's really interesting that the spirit world will use what's already in our imagination to be able to do readings for other people. So I love it. I love it. And if you're somebody interested in this, certainly join one of our online classes. When you go to wedontdie.com, right at the top of the screen, you can either click on the store or you can click on weekly at home classes. And if you don't join the first week of the month, it doesn't matter because whenever you join, you'll get the replays automatically of whichever class you missed. A lot of people do our courses 
in their own leisure. They're not part of the live group, and that's perfectly okay. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to tell you just a teeny bit about trance mediumship and play a clip from this past week's demonstration of trance mediumship with Scott Milligan. If you've listened to We Don't Die Radio in the past, Scott probably is the number one guest that people wish to come back time and time again. He's been on, oh, seven or eight times. He is a trance and a physical medium. We won't get into physical mediumship right now, but it's so extraordinary that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle actually gave up writing Sherlock Holmes when he experienced physical mediumship. In fact, on episode, I think it's three of the new show of Shades of the Afterlife, I actually have a clip of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle speaking about why he gave it up. But as far as trance mediumship goes, trance mediumship is to have a medium close their eyes, blend with the energy and love from that unseen world, and allow a person from the afterlife to speak through their mouth. Every time I talk about this, that skeptical piece of me says, people are never going to believe this. This is absolutely too crazy. Well, the good news is, I've seen Scott in person back when we could travel and be together. I've seen him do these demonstrations. And also for the past 15 months, we have been doing Friday trance demonstrations with Scott. He has several people that speak through him. We don't really call them guides. They like to be called friends because they don't necessarily guide Scott in life, but they are filled with inspiration and knowledge. And Eric is predominantly the one that we get to talk to on our Friday trance demonstrations. Now on our Friday demonstrations, they happen every week. They're all recorded. You can listen to them. We offer them if you want to come for free, if you want to leave a donation, that's fine too. I've developed so much love for this gentleman in the unseen world who had died, I believe, in the end of the 1800s. Eric will give words of wisdom, inspiration, words of comfort during one of our Friday trance demonstrations, but he'll also allow questions to be asked of him. So people each and every week ask on topics about life, about death, about the afterlife, about hardships, Eric works on behalf of many in the spirit world, and he will tell you the answers aren't just coming from him. He's being advised from people on the other side. To know Scott Milligan, you'll know a joyful young man with a great sense of humor who has been sitting with his eyes closed, blending with his love from the unseen world on a daily basis for 25 years. He's just a great guy. And when you get to hear the people that speak through him, they are different personalities. They never miss a beat. They never pause to go, "Mm, um, let me see, you know, it's nothing like that. It's all smooth, beautiful communication. And you really know you are listening to and talking to someone who has lived, who is very, very wise. So what I'd like to do is play a clip now. There is a woman who had asked a question on our last Friday demonstration about her brother in the afterlife. And then we'll come back together. Here we go. We have Valerie here with us. Hello, Valerie. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for being the master of ceremonies here. My pleasure. And, <laughs> and greetings to Eric. How are Hello, you? Hello, my dear. I trust that you are well. Yes, I'm very well. Many thanks. I have a question for you. My brother passed on too young. He was 40 and he was single. But I know he would have made a terrific father as he had great family inclinations. Are those who crossed able to meet others and form a new family in the summer? Oh, land? oh yes, my friend, of course. Oh, wonderful. Now, my friend, if you are unable to be romanced in your world, you'll be certainly romanced in ours. (laughs) Now, my friend, if you allow me to extend upon this matter and tread very carefully upon this subject, if you are brave and pleased, come with me on the journey. 
if I would allow a thought to enter your mind that so many people in your world search for love but are never fully successful. Mm-hmm. You may have love for a moment and then they may move away and find a deeper love. But your heart still yearns and your soul continues to search. Now, how we view love is color. If you are meant to express eternity with each other, your colors must be in harmony. And as your life progresses, as the colors evolve, the colors must evolve together. And therefore, that you will remain romance with each other. And death may separate you for a brief moment until you are rejoined. If love is there, of course, but you were unable to procreate and give life to the world. In our reality, there are many children that have come to our side of life, but may not have been loved by their parent. And therefore, they find love with these new individuals. But remember, my friend, you are born into your physical family, but it may not be your spiritual family. If you are born into a family that does not appreciate you, may abuse you or cause you harm. You are born into a physical family, but you will never spend eternity or moving into the great vibrations of eternity. You will be found and revisited and reunited with your spiritual family that will love you for all that you are. So, my dear friend, you say to me, your brother came over too soon. Mm-hmm. Yes. He did, but he also came over at the perfect time. Oh. And what I mean by that, my friend, is that within our reality, there's been someone waiting, saying, one day, I will do a marriage, and he will be mine, and I will be his. Oh. So, my friend, I hope I have not offended you by saying it was the perfect time. But what I've said is that when someone comes to our side of life, if they choose to have the excitements of uh, courting each other, then so be it. If you allow me to go further upon this matter, in your world you have one single day where you are loving no matter who they are and you send them little tokens and many flowers come to our side of life that have been severed and given as a gift. Mm -hmm. Why do you need one day to show this when our reality is all the time? Um. I know that when I leave you, I will go back to my dear wife And I will share thoughts with her and romance her, give her tokens of affection. And I will listen to her sing, which is her gift to me. You will always be loved. But if there are children that need deeper love, you can have them in our reality. If I do not cause you to blush, my dear, And please don't think I will. But in your world, you you procreate. In our world, we make love. Love is exchange of the soul's power that has transformed into the spirit. It is much more deeper. It is respect far greater than your earth could ever experience, but it is a stepping stone, my friend. If you allow me to bring a smile to your face, you know how times have changed. (laughs) In my time, it was frowned upon if a lady would show her ankle. (laughs) The seeing their ankle could drive Mm. anyone to insanity. But I thank God how you see God to be. But your world has changed. Yeah, yeah. 
It was it was very frowned upon, you know. A gentleman should never roll their sleeves up in public. No, they must keep the shirt buttoned. <laughs> covered, because it's, it's the sins of the flesh, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How can it be a sin when you honour who you are? But yes, you know, I have to say, on numerous occasions, we used to say strong thoughts if we saw an ankle, you know. No, it was not that way. And if anyone would go to see the ocean, they must be properly covered, properly covered, just to protect them, you know, from the sun. But many people got themselves into sticky situations, you know, when one is bathing and the ankle was revealed. (laughs) So, my dear, thank you for allowing me to remind myself of how progress has been but also thanking you, reminding me that love will always alter and strengthen over time. So if one has not been romanced in your world, you'll certainly be romanced in our reality. That you're saying and your stories give me such peace to know that my brother is pursuing love and and a new family in the Summerland, that it is possible. I just feel so peaceful. Thank you. I, You speak volumes. I can't fully understand. <laughs> but may I say this to you? Whatever you are missing out on now, be it through the excitement of your brother finding someone or a child, be it loved, you will see this when you come to our side of life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You will be introduced and instantly know and instantly will fall in love. But in your dreams, my friends, you've already met. Someone once said to me, Eric, my friend, it must be very crowded in your world. And I said, no, your world is very crowded. In our world, we are light. Light takes up no room at all. In your world, you experience darkness, and darkness can fill a room. Wow. So, my friend, we have many suited people in our side of life, you know. But one thing I will tell you, as some of you may know, it is not gentlemanly to say so, but I do so with humor. Our dear friend, young Daniel, is being romanced by a lady called May. (laughs) He says he does not wish to be romanced. She says, I wish to be romanced by him. (laughs) It is fascinating and comical to see such tomfoolery (laughs) of how one tries to express love and the other tries to run away. (laughs) That is a story for another time, my friend. Okay. So, if I have given you peace, my friend, let us move along. Yes, thank you so much, Eric. I, I feel very peaceful, and I'm thrilled to know that my brother is happy where he is now. Thank you. Well, I have to say to you, even though that you are the messenger of other people's curiosity, this is for all life. But remember, my friend, if you do not wish to rush and you like the, not the isolation, that's not the right word, but you like your own company, when you come to our side of life, you can have your own company. If love is truly there, it's worth waiting for. I hope you enjoyed that. For us single people out there who always wonder if our knight in shining armor or our princess is around the corner, the good news is they are, but it may just take a little waiting for. I've been on these trance demonstrations for so long, and there's not a topic under the sun that is off limits. It's really been great to find out things on some of the tougher situations too, you know, people who have gone to the other side by way of their own hand. Yes, I mean suicide. 
There's been topics about suffering. There's been joyful conversations about what it's like in the afterlife. And no matter how our loved ones get over there, they are greeted by loving arms and hands and people. They are restored to whatever their favorite age is, whatever their favorite health is. But we shouldn't rush it because there is so much life here to be enjoyed, to experience, to experience emotions, to experience that growth for the soul. If you would like to hear more of these trance demonstrations, you can certainly be my guest. You can use the coupon code FREE, F-R-E-E, FREE, at wedontdie.com. Click on the store and you'll see all kinds of things with Scott Milligan and that free coupon should work for most of them. There are numerous topics about the afterlife, deathbed visitations, near-death experiences, people who have past life memories, children who have before life memories, people that are working with technology to capture images and voices of people in the afterlife, spirit artists, and so much more. There's just so much. When we can fully embrace that we are souls having a human experience. We want to have the best life possible while we're here. So what I'd like to do now is play for you that clip I told you about in the beginning. Because life can be really difficult. Certainly there's times of joy, but I think there's more tough times, don't you? In our Sunday gathering, they spoke about these six stages on our spiritual journey. And listen in, because I really believe you're going to say, oh my gosh, I'm at that stage right now. And there'll be something great around the corner for you. And then also listen in to the end when we have the experience of sitting in on a medium reading that's quite entertaining. Here's Carrie and Phil. Often we forget to nurture ourselves. So we thought we would share um, some words on nurturing ourselves through that process, which Phil and I and many others call the spiritualization of the self or of the soul. But it's a path that can sometimes be a little bit daunting and we can be really, really hard on ourselves. So we thought we'd share with you the six steps of moving through that process and the first part is about the awakening so when you wake up and it often happens where there there's two reasons often and one is trauma one is where there's complete chaos when maybe somebody's had a bereavement or an illness or something's created an instance of chaos in their life and something beautiful comes out of that because there's an awakening in self where we start to ask the questions of, is there life after death? Is this all there is to life? Is there more here? And we begin to ask those real philosophical questions as we begin to wake up. Absolutely. And it's almost like the bare necessities of life, going back to those bare oh. pictures. Because you want to go back. <laughs> Don't they look cuddly? You just want to run up and just give them a hug. But we know better than that. But it is, it's about that soul awakening. It's about that spontaneity of, of coming to that time of life where everything opened up and we start thinking about there must be more. There's a divine purpose. And we start to question and look at life differently. And we all go through that. And, and we come into um, a second stage, which is bliss, really, which is everything's great. Everything's wonderful. That we start to see nature. We start to see the flowers, the trees, the skies, the sun. And we start to really appreciate life. Even where we start interacting with nature again, not the bears, but the the birds this time and we start feeding them we start planting vegetables maybe and we start to really encompass self in life and start to feel that oneness with life as well because when we feel that oneness we begin to get a sense of connectedness to everything so this is where people will talk about feeling connected to the creative force of life they might sit to begin to meditate they might begin to feel um like Everything is a gift and it's a beautiful phase. And often we don't want to leave there because everything becomes a something. So many of you might recognise this when you see signs, when you see coins or feathers or cloud formations or numbers. And everything is a divine sign and it's a beautiful place to be. But it doesn't last forever because we have to grow. 
We do, and we come into what we call the great purge or what we call that dark night of the soul where we start to question life. We really go within self and we become a little bit lost. We start to look for other things and start to reach out for other people that may not think quite like the same way as we do. We start to ask those questions, is it just me? And it's almost like we go on a little bit of a retreat within self and there's many stages. You can call it the 40 nights and 40 days in the wilderness. It's all these things that we go through and start to look at and really question life itself. And sometimes this can go on for some time. And like I said before, we get really lost. But it's a natural and most important part of your spiritual awakening because you start to find self. You start to find your true authentic self, your individuality, your purpose in life. So it's a really great, well, it's a good place we have to go through. We might not think it at the time, but it really is important within because our Because as we grow, our soul goes through all those things that have happened when we're younger and we start to need to heal self. It's called the dark night of the soul because we can sometimes feel a little bit lost. But in that feeling lost, we need to find self. And in the time before that, we might have found houses or cars or things things to fill that space this is where we go in and we really find ourselves so it might show up as feeling lost or feeling a little bit sad or maybe a bit of spiritual depression or a bit anxious but it doesn't last forever although it sometimes feels like it does but it's a space we have to go through because if we don't go through that we cannot go to the next stage which is called the great rest and in that space, we allow ourselves, it's that space between the old self and the new self. We have to allow the healing to settle. We have to allow the reflections to take place. We have to, on those reflections, learn in bed and allow it to become part of our new self. So this can sometimes feel a little bit like surrendering so there's no more kicking no more screaming no more fighting to move forward you somehow just get that sense that life's going to happen the spirit world is working alongside and it's going to take place absolutely and it is this knowing inside that everything is just going to be okay because we've gone through that dark no we've gone through those dark places all those questions and we tried as Kerry said to fill those thoughts and what those needs with the material objects like cars and things like that as she said but it's not quenched that thirst of the soul it started to open your eyes again to life knowing there's more and you started not just thinking it or perceiving it but actually living it it makes a huge difference when you start to interact with that creative force of life. Nurturing self, nurturing self through this process is really important because we start to change. And if we start to change our inner thoughts, our outer world starts to change as well. And we are glass houses. So when we start to change and all these intentions are there, all our new thoughts are there, all this positivity of what life's really about, we start to attract it to us. We start to nourish what those plants, or should I say those seeds mm. that we've planted, very much like planting those seeds in a garden, we start to see the real fruits of our labour through the fruits or the flowers or whatever we're growing. But it's really important we go through these stages. Because mm. in the stage we begin to walk our walk and speak our truth and this is sometimes where people will say oh you wouldn't have said that before or they notice that your reaction is slightly different because you have laid new foundations and those new foundations is where you're working from and as you begin to move from that stage four into stage five there's a sense of deep peace it's a sense of really being grounded. And in this place, we feel like more of the adult. We're able to not get caught up in the drama. You know, these old mm. things where people create this drama and make mountains out of molehills. Can I have that in writing? <laughs> and you stand back and you begin to look at things slightly different. This feeling grounded in this deep sense of peace is where we begin to really get a sense of who we are. We pick our battles, 
we pick our conversations, we facilitate deeper conversations, not saying we're the perfect article, no. because in stressful times, we often still default to old ways, but we're able to see things slightly different in this phase. We are, because we start to notice the changes within self. We start to catch ourselves thinking we were normally reacting different ways. So you can see the, the value of this journey that we go on because you start to see life and interact in a different way again. And you start to, as Kerry said, not to get involved in those dramas or see past the drama or realise they're happening. Now, we, that's the other side of it as well. We start to realise it might not be important to us, but it's important to other people. So we're developing this empathic side of us and understanding of where other people are on their journey and you start to interact in a different way again. So it's really important. But this deep peace, this groundingness, is one of those building blocks or a starting block where we can start to look at life and take those further steps in our spiritual journey with deeper understanding, not just understanding that we enjoy nature and we see the colour and trees, but how they interact in life, how one needs the other to survive. It's absolutely wonderful. And we can start to see because we stop comparing ourselves and if we look at nature, it's a wonderful example because we have each blossom, each flower is not competing. It's just doing what it's meant to do, which is grow, nurturing itself in that sunlight. And we start to become that flower. We start to just grow. We start to shine. We have that fragrance, that presence, if you could, if you can mm -hmm. turn it in ourselves into a flower. And people start to see the difference. People start to notice the difference in you. And it affects them. So it's really important that we understand all these stages. And the last and final stage, and remember, this isn't once you get to the stage, you're done. You sometimes go back and redo things. But the last stage of it is you commit. You begin to walk your soul's path. You begin to speak your truth without apology. You begin to do your purpose with passion. You begin to feel that you're walking your soul's calling. You begin to know whether you're the nurturer, whether you're the teacher, the leader, the healer, whatever it is that you are called to do, you begin to feel, I can do that no matter what happens. So you're not one foot in the room and one foot out. You're both feet firmly in the room and being committed to where you're going to next. Absolutely. So when you know that all these situations in life, all these issues keep on cropping up, they're there for a reason for you to go through, to learn, to grow, to evolve, and to be that flower at the end of the day that everyone sees and, and sees bloom. And it's understanding this process that really is the spiritualization of you and where you catch yourself, understand yourself differently and interact in life differently mm -hmm. as well. And this can go on for years. It can go on for months. It can go on for weeks. It's all down to you and what you do. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the period we've been through COVID, it's given us time to slow down in some ways and reflect taking everything we've done and we have a chance now to, as we come out of it, make differences, not just in our lives, but in our families, mm -hmm. in our friends, even in the communities that we interact with socially as well. So you are each one of those stages you've been through and you can probably recognise them as we've gone through. You might be in them right now and think that means so much to me and it might help you take that next step and feel quite rested, find that peace and able to be the adult and the person you're meant to be, to really understand and nurture yourself. And that's really important as you go through those stages, because we're going to go through them until our very last breath, and maybe even beyond that, is that we nurture ourselves. We recognise it's a natural place within the human existence is to go through this. And what a wonderful experience it is to be learning and growing to be learning and growing, shedding off the old, those growing pains and knowing that we're going to be coming out of it something different. So nurture yourself, regardless of what stage or phase you're in, nurture yourself. It's really important because only you'll be able to know which place you're in and to look back and to always remember where you've come from because that helps you focus on where you're going to. Those words are really good advice for all of us. It's not easy, my friend, living this human life. So 
we are on that spiritual journey. I think it's important to stay part of the community because not many people speak this language. They really don't. They may be the naysayers. They may look at us a little funny. God bless some of the people in my life. They love and support me. But when I get into the conversation about life after death, sometimes one eyebrow goes up like, you know, you sound a little crazy, Sandra, but it's okay. I think it's a time in everybody's life when they start looking for answers. We have our Sunday gathering, which I said is completely free. And the next clip with Carrie McLeod is from our Sunday gathering because doing medium readings is part of it. But we also have those weekly classes I was telling you about. And if finances are an issue, I want to tell you about something that I just recently opened up to the public. It's becoming an affiliate. And what that means is if you're somebody who likes this radio show, you love talking about the afterlife, you may be a student in one of our classes. I know firsthand how difficult it was when I lost my main income and had to create something new. So if it helps you in any way, if you sign up as an affiliate, you can share any one of our programs. And if one of your friends or family signs up, you get 25% commission. So this can pay for your classes with us. It can give you a little extra spending money. It's just a little incentive for people to share because let's face it, sometimes it's hard to share with people that you are interested in the afterlife, but also you never know who, and maybe in your Twitter or Facebook or Instagram community, people are having a really tough time in life. They put on a smiling face, but underneath it all, they are suffering. So if you go to wedontdie.com, there's a link right at the top that says affiliate. And basically, you'll get a personal link to the website that is your own personal one. And if people purchase anything within 30 days of you giving them that link. At the end of the month, I send you some money. So that's how that works. So let's listen now to our Sunday gathering when Carrie McLeod brought in this lady's father. I do feel like I have a gentleman here. I know he would have had, um, I have to say, he must have had the Harley Davidson motorbikes. I feel he actually would have restored Harley Davidson motorbikes because I know that the, the sign here is very shiny, but I know too that he would have ridden in a biker's club. I don't know how he passed yet, but I do know somebody here knows a gentleman that would have been an avid Harley Davidson fan and owned a Harley Davidson as well. All right, we have Pam with her hand up. Hi, Pam. Hi, Sandra. Welcome. Hi, Pam. Would you understand this gentleman in the spirit world who would have been an avid um, motorbike collector and would have had a Harley Davidson? Yes, he he had a motorcycle. He didn't have more than one. But you, it would have been a Harley Davidson? Yes. Okay. But, and he would have um, known his way about the motorbike because I know that he's fixing and polishing and oh yes yes tuning and it's almost like polishing a set of shoes but he's polishing around the engine and making sure there's one bit of dirt on it I know too Pam you must also understand somebody in the spirit world with the surname of Davidson though with the name of Davidson yes I'm not sure about that outside of Harley Davidson you mean and would you understand dad in the spirit world Pam Yes. Okay, yes. then I'm not going to change the Davidson because I know that Davidson connects with your dad's family because I know I've got dad here. Um, I know as your dad, oh, works, oh. you understand where he's going with that? Oh, actually, yes. I do oh, have a dad who is also had a Harley Davidson. Yes. I, okay. yes. okay, but I also know that your dad, as this first gentleman comes in, I know your dad comes in and I know your dad is... He wants to be behind everybody else. He doesn't want to be in the limelight. He's not feeling very comfortable with everybody watching him. You would understand that with him. Yes. He's quite shy and retiring, but he desperately wants to reach out to you, Pam. I know that he must have shared a lot of stories with you. He was a lovely storyteller, your dad. Yes. 
He was a beautiful, he had a beautiful way of bringing things to life. And I know he would have had beautiful words of wisdom for you when you needed them too. Yes. Because as he tells me the stories, I suddenly feel very relaxed with him. I know too, you must have gone on holiday with him where you would have had trips to Disney Pan. Yes. Because he's... (laughs) I'm not saying he's singing it well, but he's singing the aerial song here for me. And I I know that he would have done anything to make you feel um, very relaxed. I also need to say that on those trips to Disney, your dad would have felt as much of the kid as you and the family did. Yes, And boy, did you have some beautiful memories. You must have just been looking over those photographs very recently. Yes. Because as you're looking through the photographs, there was a little tear dropped from your eye and your dad wants to acknowledge that you were emotional looking through them. Oh, (laughs) yes. Oh, my goodness. He wants to acknowledge just how close he is to you, that he is not far away from you at all all Pam that he's as much close to you now than ever and you would understand um, your dad wanting to acknowledge the difficulties in the family at the moment that you know he would have opinions on yes and he wouldn't have spoken out about those family matters but I know he sees them I know he's just shaking his head. He would have just allowed things. You know, I was said at the beginning in the address about pick your battles. Your dad (laughs) knew how to pick his battles. Yes, that's absolutely true. And his words of wisdom to you are pick your battles. Don't go in there because take that higher ground, but also be the adult. Don't get pulled into the dramas because I know your dad sees a heck of a lot of things being dramatised here without any warrant. Yes, yes. Your dad would not have been pulled into those dramas. And I get the sense when your dad was on the motorbike, the the motorbike sat as his pride and joy more than he was out on it. (laughs) That's true. Both of them, yes. Because your dad, I've got one here and one here, and they're both teasing each other about, well, I was out in mine once, and <laughs> well, I was out in mine twice. So they must have known each other, Pam. Um, yes, they did. Well, they know each other so well in the spirit world that they're teasing about who had the oldest and well, most well kept Harley Davidson. <laughs> I also know, Pam, that you must have um, either a a notice that says Harley Davidson or a badge that says Harley Davidson still belonging from your dad. Yes, I do. Okay, because your dad wants to acknowledge that. He also wants to acknowledge that there's somebody in the family that he has seen on a motorbike, but not a Harley Davidson. Uh, <laughs> wow yes my daughter was just on one <laughs> on a, okay. on a... he needs you to know that he's keeping an, an eye out for her because you must have said dad this is all your fault having four yeah. bikes in the family <laughs> yeah yes I did <laughs> know just how close your dad is to you and that he is very much bringing that sense of fun that sense of reminding you to let your hair down and enjoy the wind going through it because your dad was very much about living life to the fullest. Yes, he was. He was. And he is very much here for you and very much needing you to know he's absolutely there in a huge big way. Pam, your dad would have had dogs in the spirit world as well. Yes, And would you understand that there was a dog close to you now recently gone to the spirit world? Yes. Okay, because your dad wants to acknowledge that your dog is with his dogs and everybody is a-okay. 
Oh, oh my goodness, that's wonderful. Okay, I'm going to say thank you very much, Pam, for working with me and allowing me to do that for you. Oh, Carrie, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that brings us now to the end of another episode. Whether this is your first episode with us or you have listened to all episodes, which, like I said, between the two shows is 401. Thank you very much. It should give you a little bit of a backbone in sharing that the afterlife is real. And whether you share or not, you know in your heart that it is. It's a very tough journey being a human being. I don't think we're meant to remember the bigger picture 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I do think part of the nature of being human is to forget that we are a divine soul having a human experience because it makes the game of life more valuable. Games are meant to be fun. This life isn't always fun, but know that you are on a spiritual journey. Know that you are one of a kind. There is nobody like you. You are special right now. Yes, this very moment, you are surrounded by an unseen team of people between your guides and your loved ones that love you, support you, and they are cheering you on. And rest assured that moment that you cross the finish line into the other side, there'll be applause, they might be doing the wave for you, and you'll be greeted by your loved ones, your guides, and even your pets. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain. I really do appreciate you taking the time to listen, you being the person you are. Remember, you are a divine soul having a human experience. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.